You're watching West Hartford. You're watching West Hartford. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching, watching West, West Hartford, Hartford Community, Community Television. Television. For the community, for the community, for the community, by the community. You are watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. and welcome to Survivor to Thriver, a new series about people who have overcome adversity. So what is the difference between a survivor and a thriver? Well, to me, a survivor is someone who's able to make it through some sort of hardship, and a thriver is someone who's able to pull something positive out of the experience. They go beyond that, and they're able to grow from the experience. So. Uh, I'll share a little bit more about my story in a future episode, but I did want to talk a little bit about why I wanted to start this show. A few years ago, I started a support group for adult survivors of child abuse. Now, there are support groups out there aimed at helping to prevent child abuse and help children who are being abused, but there isn't really any out there aimed at helping the same demographic when they become adults. Even those who are young adults and just cross the age threshold into adulthood. So it became apparent to me that talking about how child abuse affects adults is still a taboo. And the aim of my show is to open up the conversation, not just about child abuse, but a whole wide range of topics, such as poverty, overcoming discrimination for sexual orientation, eating disorders, learning disabilities. And by opening up the conversation, we make it more comfortable for people to talk about these things and seek help if they need it. So today we have our first guest, um, Tara Fry. She's an occupational therapist and an amazing mother and of two little boys and, and also a wife. So she has a medical condition called arthrogryposis and she'll be telling us a little bit more about this. So Tara, what is arthrogryposis? So arthrogryposis is a congenital birth defect. Um, it affects the joints within your body. In order to get that diagnosis, you just have to have several joints that are fused. In other words, instead of your joint being able to move, the tissue inside it actually turns into bone, so it's stiff and stuck. Um, you can have that in every joint in your body. I have a very mild case, and I actually only had it from my knees down. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was born without muscles below either of my knees at all, and my feet were on almost backwards. Um, so I had tons of surgeries growing up. We stopped counting after 12, um, and I've actually felt as though I've met lots of nice people along the way and it's really shaped who I am as a person. Wow. So since it's such a rare disorder, have you ever met anyone else who has this? Yes, once. <laughs> I met um, one other girl that has this. I actually met her in college. Mm -hmm. um, a guy that I was in a class with was telling me about this friend that has something that seems kind of like what I had. And I said, no, she doesn't. Nobody in the world has this <laughs> except for me. Um, and it turned out that he was right. Her and I both have arthrogryposis and mm -hmm. we were the only ones that we've ever met that have had it. Wow, but it was just like a one-time meeting? You guys didn't like we bond both, over it or anything? We both went to school together at Worcester State. So we, we got to hang out a bunch there. Mm -hmm. um, and we keep in contact through Facebook now. Okay, great. So what was it um, like, where did you grow up and what was it like growing up with this? Um, I grew up in Westford, Massachusetts mm -hmm. um, and 
I really was quite lucky. I was very accepted into our community. Um, I always have worn leg braces, mm -hmm. um, and it, I would do silly things on the playground, like hang upside down from the monkey bars with my braces being on the lip of the monkey bar. Do not recommend them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that I always kind of made it just, it was just who I was, and it wasn't something that I felt that I needed to be embarrassed about or keep a secret. Mm -hmm. So when did you move to West Hartford? We moved to West Hartford when my oldest son was one year old, so that would have been about eight years ago. Okay, so like when you moved into a new community, was it their adjustment period or? Um, it's always been kind of interesting. So some people will not notice mm -hmm. that there's anything wrong with me. That's before I had my leg amputated. Mm -hmm. um, and other people will notice right away. They'll more often think that maybe I strained my ankle and they'll start like a casual conversation about Oh, what happened? And then they get into way more than they thought they were going to. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, what what else about growing up? I mean, how about dating? You have a husband now. I mean, yes. how is it like telling him for the first time? So that's actually a really silly story. <laughs> so we both met at a party and ended up um, having another date after that. And we're out in Boston and the parking always is atrocious. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were driving around looking for a uh, spot to park. And he said, you don't have a handicap placard, do you? <laughs> and I said, well. <laughs> so then I ha there was a perfect opportunity Segway to tell into him. the conversation. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you just told him and he was just all ears at that point? Yes. Great. That's yeah. awesome. Um, and. How about your kids? How have they handled this situation? So the boys really don't know any different. Mm -hmm. So they just know that mommy wears braces. And as they've gotten older, I've been able to tell them more complex things about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think they just that's just the way mommy is. Mm -hmm. And they don't know me any differently. Yeah. OK, um, I, th I think you mentioned before when we were talking about uh, you went to his, your kid's school and yes. was a little proactive about making people aware of. Yes. Uh, so what exactly so that, that was about? when it, so um, just last November, I had my leg amputated below the knee. Mm -hmm. um, and that was due to chronic pain in my ankle. It was probably about 10 years that I had some really tough pain to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, we did. My husband, we both researched amputation and and prosthetics, and really felt like this was going to be something that would benefit me and be helpful for me, make me um, be able to be more active without being in pain. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a lot of preparing for the family beforehand, and then after surgery, um, I found a coloring book that had all prosthetics in it and all the terminology so that kids could really understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and brought that in with my son to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And I've been going into their, his classroom um, once a week for a while now. Mm -hmm. And so they've seen me without my leg, with my leg. Mm -hmm. It's called my robot leg. <laughs> and it, the kids just really think it's interesting and ask lots of questions. Yeah. and. Sam is very excited to show me off. Now you mentioned going to um, to the school and talking to the kids. How do you feel when someone, does anyone ever approach you and say, what happened to your leg? Are you offended no. when people ask that? Not at all. Um, I want people to feel comfortable with me and I want people to feel like they can come up and ask me anything they want to. Mm -hmm. um, I've never had anybody ask me any question that I felt was inappropriate. Oh, um, it's really just people, I think, um, really wanting to understand and learn more about me. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's actually an interesting story you had about someone who kind of assumed wrongly mm. about your situation. Well, why don't yes. you tell a little bit more about that? So I've had a handicap placard now for many, many years. and. There was a time several years ago that it was uh, around the holiday season and I was at the mall with a friend of mine and parked in the handicap spot and it, that enraged a woman and her young son mm -hmm. and they had 
quite colorful language to tell me about how I did not, I should not be parking there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually led to some interesting things for me because I've been able to kind of be on both sides of the disability kind of frame of reference. So I can look typical enough that people do not assume that I have a disability but I can also wear shorts and people will very obviously know that I have a disability. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been very interesting to watch people's reactions to both of, both of me, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still the exact same person. Um, and there's been times where it's been pretty disappointing on how people react. Mm -hmm. um, but those, when things like that happen, I really just try to keep telling myself that people, a lot of people are really ignorant and that they don't understand and that's absolutely nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah, you had mentioned how when you went shopping at a supermarket, it was different yes. when you wore your shorts and it was obvious that you had a brace and then when you went and you had pants and you couldn't tell yeah. the difference, like you were being treated differently. Actually, yes. people were offering to help you when you had the pants on yes. and then they assumed that you would be offended if they asked you for help with um when your, i had my shorts yeah, yeah. When you had your shorts then That's very I did, interesting. yeah it was it was very interesting and i really do think that also some people are just they're afraid you know if it's something that they just aren't familiar with mm -hmm. then they don't know what it is and they tend to shy away mm -hmm. and i think that that is part of why at, for that experience that the grocery store clerks did not offer any help because I think they were a little nervous and didn't know what was wrong with my legs. Yeah, yeah. But when you become a regular at the store, do they end up knowing your backstory or they still don't, no. they still don't know? No. Mm. That's very interesting. What I love about your story about the parking lot mm -hmm. is you didn't blow up these people. Like I would feel yeah. like I would blow up these people, your friend was with you, I would have blown up on them for, you know, on your behalf. Or maybe I might have been mad and not blown up, but just like simmered in anger or something. Yeah. And, and I love that you guys took the high road. Your friend approached them mm -hmm. and told them, but she wasn't snooty about it or self-righteous. Yeah. She was just very matter of fact. And yeah. that's like, I think that's, it's awesome how you guys handled that situation. Thank I you. probably wouldn't have taken that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> right. Yeah. So why don't we take a look at your leg now? You could show us a little bit more about sure. it. Sure. So this is what's called a test socket. So after you have an amputation, um, you go through several sockets until they're going to give you your final leg. So mm -hmm. your final leg will be made of something much lighter, like a carbon fiber material. This is pretty heavy. Um, so this plastic part here is actually a mold of the end of my leg. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a really, uh, a piece of pylon metal that is stuck to a foot that doesn't really move. Mm -hmm. um, the next s socket that I'll get will have an ankle that actually has some motion in it. Mm -hmm. So for me, that will actually be the first time that I've ever had motion in my ankle, and mm -hmm. that will be really cool. Wow. <laughs> Re really weird to get used to, I bet. Yeah. Um, this piece here is just a tube that helps the air go out. So when I put my leg in, I can push down on it and then my husband just made this from a little science test kit and put mm -hmm. some, some sticky stuff at the end. You can plug it in and then it holds like kind of more like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And this piece actually rolls up and onto my thigh. And that is what holds it on. Okay, so putting this on and off, the whole process takes how long? Right now it takes me about five minutes. Um, when I get good at it, I hear it will take me about two minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and your boys, they make other uses of your. Yeah. Don't so they? this is um, has been a really good um, holder for a fort. <laughs> <laughs> so this has held down the sheets and blankets of forts. <laughs> uh, my husband has has. Uh, told me that he would like to use this as a beverage container. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to walk with it. <laughs> cool. Thank you for showing yeah. us that. Thank you. Now, I know you mentioned before this surgery, when you were growing up, you were able to still ski and do yeah. a lot of other very active sports still yes. growing up. So are you going to be able to learn how to 
uh, do that now that you have the Yes, I definitely website. am looking forward to that. I'm going to a support group at Gaylord Hospital in Wallingford, okay. and they have all kinds of sports programs. So they have um, sled hockey. So instead, it's ice hockey, but uh, you sit on a sled instead of on two skates. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, rock climbing. They have golfing. They have um, skiing, all these different adaptive sports, which they'll, they'll have somebody go with you the first time to really help you, uh, help you out and really negotiate how to, how to do this with a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I hope to be on the slopes with my kids. Oh, <laughs> great. Are they already skiing with they you? They do. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. So um, um, the great thing I love about why we're doing this show is we get to meet so many great people who've been able to overcome their own unique set of obstacles. And uh, I hope to inspire the audience with these stories and really give people a broader perspective on life and hopefully inspire people to take positive action. Mm -hmm. So what, what advice would you have for our audience, either people like I guess going to, it to set goals and achieve them. And if you don't see a way that you can, seek out people that can help you. Mm -hmm. um, just because you might have a disability or some kind of disorder, perhaps, it doesn't mean that you should stop trying. Mm -hmm. um, always try to reach your goals, whatever they might be. Yeah. So um, in addition to uh, Tara and her amazingness, um, I actually found out that Tara is in the same group that I, or program that I'm going through right now. It's called uh, PLTI. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a Parent Leadership Training Institute. And it basically teaches parents how to be better advocates for the community. And so as part of being in the program, Ter Tara started uh, her own community project. So yes. why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So um, one thing that I've always wanted to do was to provide a platform for families that have a child with a disability to be able to sound ideas off of other families, just meet other people that are going through simil similar situations because I really find that especially when children are really young before they go to school, it can be really isolating. Mm -hmm. So um, my professional job is that I'm an occupational therapist um, with birth to three and West Hartford is one of the towns that the company that I work for serves. Um, and I see lots of families that are feeling just like they're the only one in the world that has a child with a disability. Mm -hmm. And it, so what the thing that I really wanted to do was provide a, a free of charge play group where anybody that wants to come can come. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a blood relative. It can be a friend of the child. Your child can be 12 or your child can be 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to join the play group, then I'm happy to have you there. Um, the name of the playgroup play is called We Play Too, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be at a um, physical therapy place over in Simsbury on Hot Meadow called Live Every Day. Okay. Um, they're also the people that have made my leg and have made my leg braces before. Mm -hmm. um, they're a fantastic group of people, um, and they have offered up their space to me free of charge. Um, to have the play group and I'm very excited that's to be awesome. able to do that. And yeah. when do you project that's going to start? I'm hoping that it's going to start either March or April of this year. Okay, and you have um, contact info that people can, yes. or a website yet? Or? I'm going to have a Facebook page for people to like called We Play Too. Okay, T O O. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of the segment, I've provided a sheet that goes our information about Live Every Day, which mm -hmm. is where it will be. Great. Well, um, thank you so much for being on the show, Tara, and uh, sharing everything about the leg and your medical condition and your life and this project that you've gotten a head start on that you're leading. That's great. So um, for more information about We Too Play, We Play Too. Yes. My, my mistake, a little dyslexic today. <laughs> um, um, please visit the Facebook page that's going to be starting. And if you're interested in being a future guest on Survivor to Thriver, the in contact information will be followed. Mm -hmm.